Gary Thomas, Rodney Bullock, John Craman, and I are so happy to be back here in Houston, Texas to talk about your fabulous collection of high-performance Fords coming to Kissimmee in January. Shelby's, you've got Boss 302s, you've got Mach 1s, you've got uh, pre-war vintage Fords as well. If someone were to ask you to describe your collection, how would you do it? There was no restriction, at least placed on myself this year. Uh, the first time I'd auctioned it was Meekum in January of 2022, and it kind of had a red theme. So this year, it's again, Ford high performance, but also uh, quite a lot of one of one cars. Rodney, for over 20 years, you've been a big part of this collection. Uh, one of the guys really sort of behind the scenes, what do you look for when Gary brings a new car into the mix? Basically just starting off with good bones, good foundation, you know. Um, it, you know, it costs way more money to do a bad car, you know, metal work and so forth, as it does to start off with a really good car to begin with. You start with a good car that has all its key pieces, you're way ahead of the program to begin with. And that's really uh, more important these days as the cost of materials and restorations have, you know, almost doubled in the past five years. You know, if you want a collector car, you want the best of the best with numbers matching drivetrain, um, you know, documented and so forth. And that is what we're bringing uh, with this group. Another trip to Kissimmee, Gary Thomas. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you've got some great memories down there, and of course, your collection of Shelby's is uh, absolutely phenomenal. What Shelby's would you like to tell everybody that are particularly significant to you? Uh, the ones that we're bringing uh, this uh, January of 2023 uh, includes a 66 uh, GT350, and it's a unique car because it's a black, no-stripe car. Uh, it's an automatic, and it's got the specialty steering wheel. So it's just a rare car, and I've been told there were nine of those. So and a was, steel hood. It, and a steel hood as well, crazy. yes. crazy. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. yeah. And in all the collection, I've only had one Super Cobra Jet. So we're bringing a 1970, and it's Wimbledon white, and it's rare with a maroon interior and 428 Super Cobra Jet. The others, you know, I've always enjoyed pairing cars up and had been able to find in Oklahoma uh, grabber blue, white interior, white rag top, uh, 1969 uh, GT350. There are only, um, I think, uh, 194 of them in total for the two years. Well, this happens to be a one of one as well. And then we were able to pair it up with a 1970 grabber blue fastback white interior. And it's, uh, both of them are air conditioned and both one of one cars. So Rodney, Shelby Mustangs, man, kind of the holy grail in the Mustang world, uh, and obviously a great group. But there's one very special Shelby that's come at the auction that a lot of folks may not have seen before. It's got a little bit of a foreign connection. Shelby to Mexico. Uh, Shelby um, had a partnership in Mexico. Uh, they did not produce fastback Mustangs in Mexico. So in order to produce a Shelby in Mexico, it had to be a coupe. Well, his partner owned a fiberglass shop down there, so we stretched the roof line um, with some, basically a facade, so it you know, had the look of a fastback from the side, uh, covered it with a vinyl top, but they had fiberglass bumpers, fiberglass uh, lower front chin spoiler uh, versus the ABS on normal Shelby. They, they retained the stock front fender, so they had a short Shelby looking hood and then all the rear fiberglass on the deck lid and end caps. It's all one-off, special, Shelby to Mexico only. Let's talk a little bit about the Boss cars. Now, you've got three coming to Kissimmee, and they're all one of ones. That's, yes, sir. that's fascinating. Uh -huh. I've just always loved the Boss 302s, and I think it came about in the early 80s. And I had collected a few Shelby's at that time and, and was interested in, you know, you get into a group and you start seeing other cars. So I was introduced to the bosses. And I happened to be in Atlanta, Georgia, and I found a Boss 302 Grabber Blue 1970 and was really impressed with the car, such that I bought it 
And I got in it that afternoon about five o'clock and I drove it to Midland, Texas, which is well over a thousand miles, and I couldn't get out of it. I drove straight through and fell in love with the Boss 302s. Uh, we're bringing the 1969 and it's rather unique. It's a Wimbledon white and I think they only made 54 Wimbledon whites that year. It was, they only made four colors. It was the least produced and it's one of one with white interior. Then the Grabber colors grabbed me with that first Grabber Blue uh, Boss, bringing a Grabber Blue Boss and a, a Grabber Orange uh, Boss 302. And both of them are um, fully optioned. I think there's like 12 options with each of those cars. Obviously, a big part of the mystique of the Boss 302, 69 and 70, was the success of the car at SCCA Sports Car Racing. Of course, that's what it was designed for. But all these years later, it's a heck of a street image car, high performance small block. Rodney, what's it like to get behind the wheel of one of those? You know, they're really underrated in the horsepower realm. You know, I think they rate them 290 horse. Right. It's way more than 290. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we were trying to make people happy, giving them the numbers, but they're a very tame driving car. You can, you know, you can make a daily driver out of them, but if you want to go out and, you know, do a little track event and beat on them a little bit, the, you know, the horsepower is there. And, you know, they're a fun car because, you know, big disc brakes, big nine inch rear, um, you know, and naturally the four speed. Mach 1's not usually associated with high performance. They were kind of like a plush mobile uh, when they debuted, although you could option them out to make them very formidable competition cars, like one of the Mach 1's that you have in your collection that's coming to Kissimmee. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a rather unique car. It's a 428 uh, Cobra Jet. So this is uh, one of the Ford factory drag cars. It went to Folgers Ford in Fremont, California, and Lucy Below was the driver. Mm. And then we found that she and Bob uh, Below retired here in the Houston area. So then it was great to have them come over and share stories about that particular car. So Rodney, let's talk about the spectrum of the Mach 1s coming to the auction. Uh, we talked about the race car. What about some high performance street cars? We're sending the 428-69 um, Cobra Jet car. I'm sending 270 Mach 1s. One is a Calypso Coral Vermilion interior. Mm -hmm. The other car is an unusual car uh, as a color combination of equipment. Uh, Grabber green, white interior, four speed, 351 Windsor, air conditioner car. Let's turn the clock back to the 1930s, uh, Gary, because you have some really special uh, uh, vintage Fords, both stock and uh, hot rods that you can tell us about. Really, it's just going back to the performance days, and they started in 1932, and at least in my book, thinking about Henry Ford and coming up with a V8. So we've got a stock 32 Roadster, but then we also have a um, street rod, 1932 sedan. Uh, it's very plush, and then we have a 1935, this kind of mid-range as far as uh, resto uh, mod. It's got a 312 with a three-speed standard uh, transmission, a uh, little roadster. And then we have a 1939 Ford Deluxe Coupe original and a 1940 Ford uh, Deluxe convertible, uh, this street rod. Well, Gary, Bill and I, we always love coming here, hanging out with you guys, talking cars. Your collection is absolutely the best. So here's the big question. Why Kissimmee in January for this group? That's probably one of the most asked questions over the <laughs> last year because I had never auctioned any cars, had sold very few, uh, having collected for 40 years. Uh, so it was really a good experience. Rodney and I had a great time in Kissimmee. Uh, we enjoyed meeting, you know, the future caretakers of these cars. And uh, the Meekham family is just really special to us and we just assembled a good cross-section of excellent cars once again and plan to have a great time in Kissimmee with you guys.